Hello and welcome to Stay Paid, the sales and marketing podcast from Reminder Media, where we talk about actionable ideas to help grow your business so you can live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. My name is Josh, and this is Luke. And I am Luke, <laughs> and I am the superhero that takes action. I'm That's dropping my, the titles. Yes. I'm dropping yeah, the drop formalities. The, drop the titles. Yeah. We don't need the titles. We're jo- I tried to pitch this last week. I said we should be Josh and Luke, the Stay Paid Pals. Yeah. <laughs> But everyone Stay thought paid that was brothers. too corny. Stay paid brothers, not pals. <laughs> He's shaking her head. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to talk about making a lasting impression with clients and prospects. It's easy to make a good first impression by just smiling, maintaining eye contact, and nailing the handshake. But how do you make an impression that is going to last well beyond that first meeting or after the transaction? That's where we recommend coming up with something for your business that is your impression piece. We'll talk about what an yes. impression piece is, why you need one the top three things your impression piece should accomplish, and then wrap up with some examples of impression pieces and where you should use them in your business. Yep, it takes what, less than seven seconds for someone to form an opinion of you? Is it seven seconds? Yeah. So so it takes seven seconds for someone to form an opinion of you. One of the things I coach new realtors on specifically when they get into this business is that the only thing that really separates you from your competition is your brand, meaning like, you have work ethic and you have your technical skills. And I'm not saying there are not some technically more skilled people out there in the business, but really the differentiator is how you are perceived. People will literally work with you because of how they perceive you versus maybe even like you might not even be the most talented person, but your brand represents you as the most talented person. And that's why they choose to work with you. And that's why it's so critical that you have these impression pieces because they're making an opinion of you within seven seconds. And the only thing that differentiates you from your competition is your brand, is how you come across to people, how they perceive you, how they perceive your results. And then you have to back all that up in your delivery. But while they'll choose you is because of your brand. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, the impression piece that you create with your marketing, with your collateral, with whatever you're putting together, um, really is an extension of what that brand is that you want to portray. So I think one of the uh, key things about branding is, you know, your brand isn't your logo. Your brand isn't just this piece of marketing that you create. Correct. Your brand is how people perceive you. It's what your clients say about you. But That's a great point. What your clients say about you. Yeah, yeah. It's not what you say about yourself. It's what your clients say about you. And and then the impression piece is really something that we preach so much because I think a lot of people uh, don't think about the impact that it can leave after that meeting. So kind of like even in the intro talking about how if you – it's so hard to research stuff about an impression piece, but you can research a ton about making your first impression Mm -hmm. and how all of these little things that you could be doing with your body language and the clothes that you wear and how you greet people and what you say. Your energy. Yeah, all goes into forming that impression of you. But then once you leave, what's that thing that you have that's signature in your business that you leave behind that someone can hold on to and then you'll stay top of mind with? Because ultimately that's the goal, especially as a service-based sales professional, any small business – how can I make sure that I'm number one or two yep. when people think about the service that I provide, that I'm top of mind in order to do that? They yep. have to have something There's more There's got to be some like in financial, when we talk to financial service professionals, and maybe some of you listening to this are in the financial arena, we call it like the sticky asset. What's going to stay sticky in the home? What's going to remain with yeah. somebody long after you leave? I think the point you touched on, which we should you know reiterate to people, is that Gary Keller point of if you're not first or second, you have no chance of getting the deal. Mm -hmm. You have no chance. So when someone thinks of, you know, I guess the example would be you got to buy a car today. The first two car dealerships that pop into your mind are the car dealerships that are going to get your business. And I don't know the exact stats off the top of my head. I think number one is like around 75% or something like that, that the first person you think of. 70, 30. Yeah, 70, 30 or something like that. 70% of the time you're going to choose the first thing that pops into your mind. And then 30% you're going to choose second. I mean, third place doesn't get anything. Truly second place you're losing too. This impression piece should be one of the many weapons in your arsenal that is helping you remain sticky and build that mind share. So that's maybe the first point to make about an impression piece is how do you make an impression piece that's gonna stick around? So is your business card an impression piece? So when you think of a service-based sales professional, what are they giving to everybody? They're giving a business card. Now let me ask you guys, put yourself in the recipient's shoes. How many of you have received business cards before? All of you have. Do you still have those business cards? 
Do, do you actually hang on to them? I don't hang on to business cards anymore. Oh, I even no. I even struggle, and this is terrible from a sales perspective, I even struggle at conferences, the business cards I get from tons of people, which are leads for me, I even struggle to hang on to those mm. because they, not that they become a commodity, or but it's just, it's a, another piece of junk. Yeah. So how do you create something that people are gonna hang on to and maybe this is jumping ahead a little bit, but the point I would make is it goes back to relevancy. And how do you create something that's an impression piece for your business, but adds value to the person who's receiving it? So that's the business card is relevant, what, to your business? It's not relevant to the person receiving it. It's only relevant is if they're in the immediate need for what you're, what you're doing, and they're going, I am actively in the buying process right now and need a realtor, need an insurance person, then they keep your business card. That's such a great point because I think a lot of people go into it thinking, what can I do that makes me look good or what can I create or have that, that serves my needs? Correct. Versus what you're saying is put yourself in the shoes of your prospect or your client and say, what could I give them that suits their needs mm -hmm. but also reminds them of me? And Correct. that's I think where the relevancy comes into play. Look at your business Look at what you provide. And this is, we talk about this stuff all the time. Last week, we talked about going live on Facebook and how to bring in your interest and what you do to add value to your clients' lives yep. on social media. Same thing here with this impression piece. What can you actually create? I mean, when we go to conferences and things like that, we're always trying to think of, you're not going to see us show up at conferences with, um, I don't know, you know, just an example like a stress ball or yes, something like that. Yes, correct. Because at the end of the day, that's not what relates to what we do that Correct. also provides value Correct. to our clients. So we're going to And that swag really means nothing. I mean, how it, many of you guys, what do you it, do it with that nothing. swag Right, at I'm the just conference. using that as kind of an example of, like, even when you're picking your swag yep. for your office, that you're yep. sitting on your desk there, think about how can the person that I'm sitting down having a meeting with mm -hmm. actually use this item and then think of me? Yes, correct. Well, think think to yourself when you're coming up with your impression piece. It's got to brand your business, so it's got to hit that point. It's got to be something that brands your business and has your contact information. And, and when they think of it, they think of you. But the key in the, in the differentiators that I've seen in impression pieces is when it, they think of you but they can use it in their everyday life or they have it and it's super relevant that remains in the home. All of you guys know with American Lifestyle Magazine, that's been our real differentiator. Our real differentiator, for those of you who listen to our podcast that don't know our product, you can find it at ReminderMedia.com. But one of our real differentiators is that we, instead of focusing on the business for the, for the majority of the content, we focused on the consumer and we just branded the business information on it, which allows the business person to give it out as a gift, to give it out as an impression piece, and that person's going to hang on to it. The second point I would make about impression pieces, because American Lifestyle Magazine would not work. It would not work just being the content that you give to somebody that's relevant to them. I shouldn't say that. It's possible it could work. But the second piece I would say that's key to a, a good impression piece is high quality. Mm -hmm. Because what you gotta, it's like, you see this in swag, because you mentioned the swag at conferences all the time. And I got mad because we did pop sockets. And what did I get mad at with the pop socket? We had our name branded on the back of the, the pop socket. The logo rubbed off. The logo rubbed off. And it made me so angry because that's a representation of our company. Not only do our does our branding Little go away. Pop sockets is like yeah. the second fastest yeah. growing yeah. company. I love pop sockets. How are they doing that with yeah. logos that rub the, off? Yeah, the logo rubs off. I love pop sockets. So, but the point being is that <laughs> high quality. So, so two things so far. When you think of an impression piece, think about the person you're handing it to and what they want more than what you want has to be branded with your information. Second is it has to be the highest quality unless you don't want your brand to be that. Unless you, it, because it's an extension of your brand is this impression piece. But unless you don't want your brand necessarily to be you know, the highest quality, which I'm It might very, not. I mean, not to be funny, it might not. You, you okay. might you, you might not. You might be going, <laughs> it's, it's totally, you have to pick your niche and what right. you want to represent. Yeah. For when you're giving someone, I would say, hey, pick something that's high quality because that is what will make it sticky. It will make yeah. it sticky if it's high quality. If it's not high quality, well, we all know what happens there. There's a great book called Made to Stick, I think by Chip Heath, Chip and Dan Heath. I don't know that if I've read it. Made talks about the ideas that stick, you know, what, what differentiates them. And it really, it's a, good, it's a good foundation for thinking through ideas like this where, you know, talking about something that's going to stick around, that's going to last. Um, but one of the things that you mentioned there about American Lifestyle, one of the one of the challenges we've had at marketing the product is nobody searches for a customizable 
magazine, magazine because but <laughs> Very think few about th- the the reason why is because what are people searching for? They're looking for postcards, they're looking for business cards, they're right. looking for all these things that they need. Yep. Whereas what and this hey guys, this is going to be a plug for American lifestyle. It just is. Oh yeah. But what yeah. we've done is really focus on what does that person that's receiving that product want, want yep. and need. So it's why even in you know in our our pitch is a little bit more of an explainer sale where we have yep. to kind of explain the concept behind it and then make the connection and once people see the connection they understand it better because it's it's something that's going to differentiate you from your competition yep it's something that people are going to keep in their homes and this is all things that we're tying back to where this whole podcast is about impression pieces in general that's an example of why we made this thing well the third point the third point of an impression piece that i think if you want a good impression everybody's doing in a business card that is an impression piece there's nothing wrong with that don't stop doing business cards Mm. it's it's you're giving it out as part of your impression third thing unique has to be unique Meaning how many, uh, think about your resumes too, like when you put in your resumes, because we get resumes all the time. Like you want to make your resume somehow unique. Now you don't want to make it crazy. I thought about resumes during this process. Did I, you really? I, That's, yeah, I've I thought about resumes ones, too. Um, that we've gotten and I've looked at ones online. You know, one person had like a resume where it was a little Lego guy and you had to build the Lego guy. And it's and at the end, it's like, let's build something great together. Oh, my gosh. You know, that's just something that's <laughs> going to make, you know, it's cheesy, but it's something that's going it to make stands people out. stand out. And stands out. We hire a lot of designers and creative professionals. Mm-hmm. So we see a lot of these really unique uh, resumes coming across the desk. And it is something that, you know, which would it's something that definitely stands out. That would lead me to one of the things that your impression piece has to accomplish, though, and that's being scalable. Correct. You know, how scalable is that hand cut, you Correct. know, craft? Uh, like you could make an origami um, <laughs> impression piece, but, but that might not scale it, very it well. It's very unique and it's very high quality and it might make an impression, but it might not scale very well. Our realtor, um, you know, gave us a gift basket uh, after we closed. And I remember then seeing on social media a little bit later how yeah. the next person she closed got the same gift basket and it was, it was the exact same gift basket yeah. over and over again to the point where it's just an assembly line correct yeah you know, and i'm sure a lot of our but that's what great that's similar. what great businesses are made off of yeah. meaning like steve and i have been discussing we McDonald's. still have the pillow that she gave us yeah. in our house you know it's something that sticks around yep you remember who gave that to you meaning mcdonald's has been an expert at making hamburgers like they just got it down to a science of making hamburgers now where they maybe have failed and this is a whole nother podcast is the client experience but they have been an expert at making hamburgers so with your impression piece it's got to be scalable this is why everybody goes to postcards why everybody i mean or they go to business cards because it's very scalable and you don't have to worry about it it's turnkey you can leverage it off that's why i mean not i mean not i keep shamelessly plugging us but that's why we've been successful because ours is scalable but it's so unique and so different and so you want to find something that stands out that's unique and different creates an impact with your impression piece is scalable, and then I think ultimately, which is what every impression piece has to do, is drive return on investment. Yeah. Is it's got to produce return on investment because there's no point in doing it. The gift basket, for instance, I think it's awesome. You would make a great first impression with somebody if you gave them a gift basket every time. The problem you have there is that, one, is it's, it's harder to scale, but you can do it because yeah. obviously your realtor proved it. More, though, importantly, is that it's not cost effective. Yeah. Or it's very hard to get the return on investment. Or and it's that's hard the, to, not, maybe not hard to get the return, but hard to measure the return. Hard to, re- yeah. So that's the a better becomes, way to say it. You know, I think more, more than anything is how do you measure the return on investment of your impression? Piece? Right. Correct. Yeah. And so what I would always uh, suggest to people when you're doing anything like, um, you know, an impression piece and you're giving out, if you're not tracking everything you do, I went over this today. I was teaching a class in, in real estate um, to our team leads and making sure we educate them on exactly what's going on. And in, not only in our aspect of the business, which is referrals and, and obviously this impression piece, but also in social media. But I was saying one of the biggest areas people fail is that take, for instance, the example of when you get a like on Facebook to one of your posts the strategy you should be implementing is you should be DMing that person, thanking them for liking your post. It will make them feel really good. And it starts, but the problem becomes tracking that. You need to then take that name that you posted, put in your CRM, put the note that you actually said, okay, I reached out to Josh, I can do it. So with your impression piece, one of the places that you're going to fall down in trackability is when you give out that business card, when you give out that magazine as your impression piece, when you give out that origami piece, you need to keep track of the people you're giving it to, or you need to add a point in your process when you get a new person, you need to have a point in your process, call it a survey, call it just a uh, kind of 
discovery phase is going, how did you hear about us? Right. You know, what, what made you use me? And trying to track, this is why when you sign up for something online, like you buy tickets, what, what is the drop down that they have? They yeah. always have that drop down that Where says, where'd you hear where about, you hear about us? Yep. So you need to be doing that in your business to help you measure these impression pieces to, to help you track the return on investment because there's no reason to do American Lifestyle Magazine and spend, you know, $3.79 on a magazine or something like that when you can buy a business card for 50 cents. Yeah. Unless this magazine is going to produce you what we see it produce, which is 38% referral rate, unless that happens. Well, so that's where, you know, you have to build in a follow-up system. So the impression piece to me isn't a one-time shot, especially with past clients. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at, um, we love the book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent. We talk about the systems and that all the time. The 33 touch after uh, uh, the transaction with a client means you should be sending them something 33 times within the year after that transaction. Mm -hmm. Your impression piece, now not every single 33 things is going to be your impression piece individually, sure. yep. but it should all lead to one big impression piece sure. or have some certain touch. Well, one client higher experience. Quality. Yep. You then have to build a follow-up system that actually leverages that impression piece to then ask for the referral. And that's going to be another way where you can start to track the ROI on that. If you start to keep track of, okay, I called this person because I sent this piece out. It gave me a reason to have a conversation yep. with them where it didn't feel like I was just calling them up about business. We talked about life for a little bit. Then I mentioned the fact that, hey, yep. if you know of anyone who might be interested or might be looking to buy or if you're thinking of moving soon, you know, I'd love to hear. Um, I'd love for you to pass on my information. Keep record of that. If they give you a name, keep record of that. Keep track of how those yep. leads then convert for you and you can start to build a database. Well, you'll start seeing what you'll start seeing what drives success. So let's talk about why is it important to have an impression piece, meaning where can you tangibly use it? Yeah. I'm going to give you guys some examples right now that it's crazy to me. Like, I, I couldn't even believe that it worked this well. Believe it, I shouldn't be shocked by this, but I've worked with an agent that used American Lifestyle Magazine for Fizbo's. And here's the thing you're up against with like a, a Fizbo, right? You're up against when you're calling a for sale by owner, you're up against that the impression they have of you versus like as a realtor versus what they think they can do is really poor. So the reason why someone lists their home on their own is a couple different reasons. They don't want to pay you the commission. They don't believe you do anything. So their impression of you is poor. I worked with an agent that literally called Fizbo's, drove to the Fizbo house, knocked on the door, introduced themselves and gave American Lifestyle Magazine and they got that for sale by owner. Do you guys know that literally it's like 80% of for sale by owners list with an agent eventually? And so the key to your impression piece, so when you're listening to this podcast, you go, why do I need an impression piece? Okay, guys, I get it, but this is, you know, what's relevant about this? Why? What's the tangible aspect to my business? The tangible aspect to your business, 80% of for sale by owners are going to list with an agent. So what are you giving to that for sale by owner? I also heard another strategy to apply it not to our product, to just apply it to a business card. And I think this is out of like the bold class in Keller Williams. So all my Keller Williams agents listening to this, I think this came out of the bold class. I heard it from a guy who said they taught that go to the door of the for sale by owner, give them the business card and give them this pitch. Say, hey, Josh, just stopping by. I noticed you're selling your home. Want to see how it was going. If I could be of any help to you. Hey, look, I know right now you don't want to use an agent. I just want to give you my business card. So when the time comes, if it does, I hope you sell the home. But if not, if the time comes that you need an agent, I would like to be that agent of choice. And I want to give you my business card so you can hang on to it so I become that agent of choice. Now, I hate to break it to you guys. I don't think that business card is going to be the difference maker, but that's me personally. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is that's a very tangible thing that you need an impression piece for to drive results in your business. Where's another place you need an impression piece? When you get that Zillow lead, right? Or let's let's go for a financial advisor, right? Let's do a financial advisor because we have a financial advisor listening to this. When you do a seminar, because if you're not doing a seminar as a financial advisor, you should be. When these people come to your seminar, it is critical that you have an impression piece that they leave with. Why? Because you want to have some type of ability to not only carry your message on from the seminar in the home, but more importantly, have a reason to follow up and call them. If you just give them a business card, which is an impression piece, 
It's really hard. Hey, did you get a chance to check out my business card? Yeah. It, it, What'd you think of the back? Exactly, dude. It's exactly. <laughs> meaning, it, it's Unless really it's American hard. Psycho and you're comparing right. your business cards yes. with your other partners. Yes. The, well, if you do an origami, I'm going to be funny again. If you do a piece of origami, you can, it's better than a business card. You can literally call Josh. Hey, Josh, checking in. I just wanted to thank you for coming to my seminar. Check in to see if you had any questions. Wanted to make sure you got the origami piece that I was giving to everybody as a gift for coming. Did you happen to get that? At least you can have that conversation <laughs> with a piece of origami. You can't do that with a bit. Am I saying that right, origami? Yeah, you're doing yeah, okay. good. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't make origami. So, But the point being, versus a business card, you can't do that. So what I'm trying to drive home for you guys on this podcast is you're listening going, okay, Luke, I get it. The biz, uh, what's the big deal of this podcast and pressure piece? Guys, right. very no, tangible strategies yes. right there for finance, for real estate. Let's take an internet lead. Why do you need an impression piece for an internet lead? I guarantee you guys, you're not the only person calling that internet lead. I'm not saying the companies that are selling you the leads are selling it twice, but the reality is if Luke puts in his information on Zillow, he might be putting his information on realtor.com too. Meaning there's other agents getting that and you have to solidify not only that you can technically get them into the house, that you can show them the property they're interested in, but you have to solidify why you stand out versus every other realtor. I, I get this compliment all the time from my clients, from testimonies that they call me. This magazine was the difference that made them stand out. We have a, a, a Facebook review right now, guys. Go check it out on our Facebook page, at Reminder Media. This lady could not compete with the high-end realtor that was getting all the multi-million dollar listings. She got American Lifestyle Magazine, and the magazine was the differentiator from an impression piece standpoint that got her a $1.2 million listing. Now, I know I'm plugging stuff real no. hard here, but I'm try what I'm trying to drive home for all our listeners, right. and I'm trying to drive home that, guys, the thing that will separate you in this business, when my brother got into real estate, 90 days in, people thought he was in the business for 10 years. Why? Because of his impression piece. Yeah. They thought he was in the business for 10 years because of his impression piece. He had not sold a single home, and people were thinking that this guy is a celebrity because his impression <laughs> pieces are making He's getting it recognized way. at banks. Correct, exactly. People are seeing so, him all over the place. It's very tangible. You should have it in your business. You need to focus on it. And a business card can do it for you, but I would highly, highly encourage you guys to get something else besides a business card if you're not yeah, you're catching my drift. Odds. No, you're yes. playing the odds. Are, are you willing? Are you willing to risk all of that potential business on the card, yep. or are you ready to take a step up and use something that's going to set you apart immediately, give people an yep. impression of you that is automatically elevated in their mind? There's an app company. I wish I had it. Maybe we can find it and put it in the show notes. But that would be a cool impression piece where you can literally have them have an app for you. Yeah. So when you meet people, you can give them the the app. The code. Yeah. App. You yeah, can say, Hey, look, here's my app. You know, if you ever need me, I answer questions on there. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool impression that, man, this person's really on top of it. Even though they never will use the app. Maybe they'll never use it. The impression you just gave them was your this top guy's notch. Got an app? You got your own app? <laughs> Holy crap, man. You got your own app. I'm using you. That's how the business works. You got to realize that. That's how the business works. <laughs> Fantastic. So there you have it. What are you waiting for? Go out and solidify an impression piece for your business today. Remember, a first impression is never impressive enough. Yes. You have to make a lasting impression. <laughs> <laughs> Someone trademarked that. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please go to iTunes and rate us and give us a comment. Please. Make sure to tell someone else about the podcast today. And if uh, I don't think we say this enough, but if you'd like to get hold of me or Luke, please email us yes. at podcast at remindermedia.com. Or, of course, find us on Instagram or LinkedIn. Those are probably the best places to find us. Uh, I've been getting some messages from people on LinkedIn about the podcast, and I know Luke's been getting some on Instagram yep. about people commenting on the podcast. So it's shout great out to, hear to from Lindsay you guys. Uh, Dacey, who's going Facebook Live today. That's awesome. Um, and doing something like real estate over coffee. So very, very impressive. Very cool. I yep. like coffee. And of course, you can check out Reminder he Media like on coffee. all of the socials, except for probably Snapchat. I don't think we have Snapchat. Do Not we? yet. Not yet. Technically, yeah. we did. For this episode <laughs> of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Aker. Guys, I'm going to close with this action item. It's pretty obvious. 
Get yourself an impression piece that's not a business card. And get yourself something. The way to go about it is sit down and think to yourself, the people I'm meeting, what's really relevant to their life and what's something they would hold on to and appreciate. And you can put together very something very, very simple that maybe just gives them a couple tips answering the three top questions you get in this business that you can give them as an impression piece to not only hand them that, but you can hand them it with your business card. So take action on that today. The difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer is top producers take action. So take action on that today. Thanks, guys. 